Hi guys. I just want to do a short little intro today before we get on with your reading. The first thing that I want you to know is that I'm going to uh, make a duplicate of this video, this intro that I'm doing and I'm going to stitch it in front of all 12 signs. It's just going to save me from repeating myself. It's only a couple minutes and there's a few things that I wanted to go over. So if you decide that you're going to watch your moon or your rising sign or something like that, you don't have to watch the intro again. Just know that it's just duplicated. Also, I just wanted to let you know that I won't be doing any Vimeo extensions for the beginning of June readings. It's just because I know that a lot of people are going through financial difficulty right now. So I'm going to be doing the whole entire reading on the YouTube video. So they're going to be a little bit long. They're probably going to end up being somewhere around a half an hour. I have gotten a lot of new subs over the last few months and I'm starting to see comments, um, questions and things that need to be addressed for possibly my new subscribers. If you're already familiar with tarot card readings and you know how to interpret them, this message probably isn't for you because it's just kind of like a refresher. The first thing I want to address is the cross watchers. If you're a cross watcher and you're watching the sign for your person that you're in a relationship with and the reading is about that person, remember that the roles can always be reversed. People put comments below and they say things like, no, no, you have the story all wrong. It wasn't me. It was them. That's very possible. Tarot card readings are energy. It's energy that's around you. Energy can be connected to any person that is within the story. I also wanted to address the king and queen issue. I know that I have a hard time with it as well. Uh, as I'm flipping the cards, if I see a king, I'm going to say he. And if I see a queen, I'm going to say she. But also know that a king can be a female and a queen can be a male. Once again, it's just the energy of the card. I watch other readings on YouTube all the time and I'm a Virgo and I come up as the King of Pentacles. I know and when the person's doing the reading, I'm like, that's me right there. Just know that it is possible. Also, just know that not every reading is going to resonate with you or your situation every time. It's practically impossible. If you're listening to a reading and it's not making any sense to you, then it's just not your reading this time. The angels and the guides, they send down the messages, the important messages to the ones who need to hear them. You may not need to hear a message at this time. Also, it's a possibility that a reader is not connecting with you. If I'm not connecting with your energy, then possibly I'm just not the reader for you. There is other readers out there, some very good ones. I actually highly respect quite a few readers on YouTube. But just keep searching. You will find a reader that will connect with you. Okay, so your sun, your moon, your rising, and your Venus signs. What are they? Uh, someone who is an astrologer would probably be better off answering that question for you. But I will tell you this. You should know them. In the description box below every one of my videos, there is a link that will take you to an astrology page. You can put in your information and you can get your free astrology, it's free, a free astrology chart and you can find out what they are. And then go and just watch them because you might be surprised. I was surprised. I resonate highly with my rising sign my moon sign sometimes my sun sign seems to always be about my family and my children and my friends and things that are going on around me it's kind of strange you would think that your sun sign would make sense to you but i'm telling you that your your rising sign and your moon sign are really important you should know what they are you really should watch all three of them. Four, if you include your Venus. Your Venus is your love life. It's, it's your relationship, the person that is most significant in your life. And the last thing that I want to say is, if I'm not connecting with you or you don't like the way that I read, there's no need to leave a nasty comment. I just wanted to point out that I'm a person. 
and I have feelings and I work really hard on my readings and it's very hurtful when someone comes along and says things like you're the worst reader on YouTube. That reading was absolutely horrible. You're very unprofessional. If you don't enjoy, I, I, I don't even know how these people can do that. I would never, I can't even tell you how many times I've clicked on a YouTube video and I started watching it and I just said to myself, wow, this person's really bad. Like they don't know what they're doing. Um, I've been reading tarot cards for over 20 years, so I, I don't take them personally. I just, I try not to give them any attention because I'm a strong believer in the law of attraction. And if you give something attention, it just grows. I usually just delete it and I just move on. But I do want you to know that it really hurts someone's feelings. And, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, then, then just leave. Just go and watch somebody else who you do connect with or who you do like. There's, there's no need to make it known and be mean. And it's not even just on my channel. I, I see it on other uh, tarot card readers' channels. And, you know, we as readers, we work really hard on these videos. They're not easy. It's not easy to sit there and look at those cards and try and put a story together to resonate with thousands of people and then put it up on YouTube and be bashed. I appreciate uh, constructive criticism. If somebody doesn't like the cards I'm using, they don't like the way that I explain something, they don't like my lighting, you know, I'm always open to making my readings better. But for somebody to just blatantly say that, you're absolutely horrible. I mean, that, that's just mean. This is mean. Anyway, like I said, I'm not going to dwell on it. I just wanted to point it out. If you don't have anything nice to say, then just move on, please. But for those of you who have, so for the one nasty comment that I get, I get a thousand good comments. And I want you to know that I read every single comment. Sometimes it's while I'm sitting at a traffic light or while I'm standing in line for my groceries or something to that effect, but I read them all and I appreciate them. I try to answer them if I can. I try to like them if I can, but sometimes I'm just kind of in a rush and I'm reading them quickly. But I do appreciate your comments and I just wanted to express my gratitude for the nice comments and the people that go out of their way to actually hit the thumbs up button and leave me a nice comment. Thank you. I appreciate it. Besides that, that's all I really wanted to address today. If you're interested in any of the decks that I use in my reading, there is a link below all of my videos that will take you to my Etsy shop. Most of the decks are available for purchase there. Etsy is also the best way to reach me if you have a question about something. I get tons of emails, like I can't even explain to you. I do go through them, but sometimes it's days before, you know, I'll get to your email. But I do check my Etsy emails in the morning and at night to, you know, make sure that nobody has any questions about my shop or if somebody's looking for a certain product or something, I want to see if I could get it. So I'm on my Etsy a lot. So if you have a question, just try and send me a message through the Etsy platform instead of through an email. I do have a Facebook page and I did just start an Instagram. I've only been on Instagram for like probably a month now. Uh, the links for those are in the description box below the video as well if anybody is interested in looking me up there. And finally, I want to say don't forget to like, share, hit the little notification bell, leave me a comment, and subscribe. And thank you all. Many blessings, best wishes to you. Namaste. And I will see you soon. Hello, Aries. I'm here today to do your reading for June 2020. This is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. We are going to start off with an overall message from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck, if anybody is interested in that. Angels, divine spirits, and guides, let me do a little knock. I invite you now to come in 
and help me deliver messages to the zodiac sign of Aries for come to the edge Aries take a leap of faith take action all right so the come to the edge card is about living life on the edge and not being afraid of what's going to happen and the yang card is the masculine energy of taking action it's creation it's kind of like the magician so it looks like they want you to take a risk and take action time to go okay i don't want to go too deep time to go is underneath that if it resonates with the reading we'll see but let's see what we get with the tarot before I deliver any more of my, you know, because the reading can change in a blink of an eye. <laughs> let's see what this yang and come to the edge is all about. And the possibly time to go. Time to take action and leave something and take a risk on something new. It's kind of what I'm getting to start reading. All right. Six of Pentacles reversed, leaving a one-sided relationship or someone that may be taking advantage of you. Angels, divine spirits, and guides. What messages do we have for my Aries friends for June 2020? Okay. Show Aries what they need to know, the messages they need to see. Aries, Aries, June 2020, angels, show them please. Hmm. Very slow to come out, Aries. So I got a couple things with that. Sometimes that means to me that someone is not speaking. Page of Wands, I don't think that that's really true so far. Or something is just a very slow process. It needs more planning. It needs, you know, some more effort before action can be taken which knight of pentacles kind of tells me that too looks like you're not taking action on something right now all right page of wands the devil temperance look at angel versus devil somebody else just had that Hmm. Very interesting start, Aries. Three of Cups reversed. All right. Let me put that over there. This one will leave these out for a second so I can see them. I want to straighten a little bit. So, let's see what is going on here. The tarot deck that I'm using is the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. If anybody is interested in that, I do have to light off when I use these cards because they're very shiny <laughs> and they tend to reflect on the light. So I hope that you can see everything well. I opened up the, the window and um, let the sun shine in. So the first card that you have for your past is the Two of Cups in reverse, which is a sign of cancer. And that does signify a breakup. It can represent a disagreement. I feel very strongly. I am not one to point out someone who was cheating, but I have all the cheating cards present here in this reading. The Three of Cups in reverse is present. The Devil is present over here. And the Seven of Swords is also present. So that is my cheating combination. So there's definitely someone here. It may not resonate with everyone, but there is someone here who was cheated on and it was found out. But there's definitely an end to an unhealthy relationship here. I feel that there was, this could have been a marriage. 
If, for those of you who this wasn't a cheating situation, this could have been a marriage or just somebody that you were with for a long time. Maybe even had children with. I got a couple of pages here and we have the Ten of Cups in the center of the reading. But this person really had a chain around your neck, basically. Uh, I feel like you had no social life. I feel like you had no freedom. And this other person was just living it up. I feel, I mean, I see gambling here. I see drinking here. I see possible cheating here. I have overindulgence. Um, this other person was just living like this great life while you were, I'm assuming, staying home, taking care of the children. And like, it's almost like you didn't really even have any friends. You were somewhat of a slave. That's what I'm getting. Probably numerous arguments about all of these things because you were with this person for a long time. They just weren't putting an effort into the relationship. You were the one that did everything. You took care of the house, took care of the kids, and this other person was just enjoying life. I'm going to get off of that right now. Anyway, the seven of pentacles in reverse, sign of Taurus, you were not being noticed for all of your hard work. That's very, very clear. But you started to feel like you were wasting your time there because you weren't growing. You weren't moving forward. Your life was boring. It was routine. It was the same thing day after day. It's like you weren't allowed to grow up. You weren't allowed to have fun or experience things like, I don't know. I feel like somebody here wasn't even allowed to have a job. You just didn't grow, whatever, whatever that meant. You got up every morning and it was the same thing. You know, I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was, okay, I have to make breakfast. I have to get the kids off to school. I have to, you know, do the grocery shopping. I have to do the laundry. I have to go to the store and get things for the baby and, you know, maybe make cupcakes for the kids' school. I'm just feeling like a very sheltered lifestyle. You didn't get to leave the house unless you were doing a chore, in other words. I just, there's, there's no fun here. So you started to just say, you know what, this, this just isn't worth it. I'm not being noticed for everything that I do. The outcome to this relationship was not what I expected. I thought we were going to you know, live in this cute little house with this white picket fence and have this perfect little fairy tale, but it just didn't turn out like that. There's roadblocks here. I feel like you tried so many times, you know, you got up in the morning and you just said to yourself, today, I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going to do something for me. I'm going to have lunch with my girlfriend. I'm going to look for a job. I don't know what it was, but then something would happen and, and you couldn't do it. Like, Ugh, all right, well, I guess I have to put it off till tomorrow. It's like you were always putting yourself off, putting the things that you wanted, you desired, the things that made you happy. You were, you know, kept putting them on the back burner for other people. This is setback after setback. But anyway, I feel like you left. I feel like we had time to go under here. I feel like you left this person. You said, you know what? This was just a bad investment. This was a waste of my time. This just wasn't for me. And um, I'm not happy here. So I want to make some changes in my life. And I feel like you left. The five of swords in reverse, sign of Aquarius. So it was the end of your conflicts, the end of your struggles, you release the stress and the tension from your life. You don't want to play these games anymore. You don't want to argue anymore. That's my losers. When it's reversed, like they lost a good wife and you lost a good husband. I mean, they lost a good employee. You lost a good job. There was just too much tension here for, for things were not flowing. All of the cups are in reverse in this reading. You just weren't emotionally fulfilled. I feel like you tried to tell this person, but 
you know, obviously your point of view wasn't important. They didn't want to hear what you had to say. It was a very challenging relationship. Even if you did try to get your point across, like, let's just say that you're a mom and you didn't have a job and you went to your significant other, husband, whatever, the person you live with and said, I think I want to get a job. And they talked you out of it because what you wanted wasn't important. Do you understand? They said, oh, how are you going to get a job? And how are you going to take care of the kids? And who's going to make cupcakes? And who's going to cook me dinner? And who's going to do the grocery shopping? And blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it was. You can take this scenario and put it into any situation, even if it was a job. Maybe you decided that you wanted to quit and open your own business or look for another job. But every time you would go and express your feelings and your thoughts, this person like, you know, did this big, nah, eh, eh. not a good idea. They always said that it wasn't a good idea and you needed to get your head out of the clouds and you're not going to be able to do that. This could have something to do with everything that's going on in the world. Because I'm seeing in a lot of the readings that people have been spending time at home with people that <laughs> they're married to or, you know, their family members and they're realizing that they don't get along. Anyway, I feel like this person wants to apologize. I feel like they want to try and work things out. It's like they realized your value after you left and they, they feel guilty. They really do. Shame on them. That's what I'm hearing. They should not have treated you the way that they treated you. They didn't, you know, understand that you were a person too. And you needed to have a life just as much as they were having a life. Like, why did they get to have it? You know, we saw that Six of Pentacles reversed in the very beginning. It was This was a definitely a one-sided relationship. I'm just getting that you absolutely had no life. And you were in search of one. Maybe you even just moved out and went to stay with a family member or a friend for a little while because there was, you know, one argument or one disagreement that pushed you over the edge and because it's uh, over the edge, you know, pushed you over the edge and you said, that's it. I'm done. But anyway, I feel like you're in separation from this person and they're realizing now how unhappy they are without you how valuable you really were to the relationship. And I feel like that's what they're telling you. They're going to say anything that they can to get you to come back. You got this devil over here. You're having a conversation with the devil. Look at that. <laughs> Page of Wands is talking right to that devil. This person wants to have you chained. They want to keep you trapped. They want to keep you bound. You're free now. I feel like you are having fun, enjoying life. I feel like you're laughing. I feel like you're talking on the phone with your friends. I feel like you're shopping and buying what you want. I feel like you have a job. I feel like you go and get your hair and your nails done. And um, I don't know. I'm feeling like you're in a really good space right now. So this person, all of a sudden... It's now going to want to put in effort to the relationship. Come home. I'll give you whatever you want. You know, they're going to make all these promises that they're not going to keep. This person has a vanity, a vanity combination here as well. You hurt their image by leaving. Hmm. The more and more I, I read about this person, I feel like they have the finer things. They buy the nicest clothes. I feel like they're always getting their hair done and buying new clothes and a fancy sports car maybe um spending money foolishly i'm getting that this is two totally different lifestyles here this person was very materialistic obsessed with their image as well they just have this uh, attitude about them that they want everything served on a silver platter. And you were doing it. And now that you stopped doing it, they have this like rude awakening. Ten of Cups, sign of Pisces, in reverse, in the center of the reading. 
that is my trouble in paradise that is my separation card i don't really see too much divorce here i this this relationship is at an in-between stage it's not necessarily together but it's not necessarily over i feel like you're trying to figure out what are we doing here you're unhappy you're not together you're possibly talking about divorce I feel like that's what you want. But now this other person is trying to talk you into staying, probably because of the children. You know, they always do this whole spiel. Oh, we have so much time invested into this relationship. We can't just throw it down the tubes. We have to keep trying. So you're at a crossroads right now. You got this two of wands coming up in your future here. You don't know what you want to do. Do you want to go back with this person and stay there because it's comfortable? You've been with this person for a long time. You already know them. You already have children together. Why would you want to take a chance and take a risk on leaving them and seeing what else is out there for you in the world? That's what you're saying to yourself. There could also be a relationship here that broke up. I just noticed this because someone wouldn't get married. They kept telling you that they would get married. They would move the relationship to the next level. And then they just didn't follow through on it. So you left and ended it. And if this is a job, I feel like you were promised some type of promotion or a pay increase. And they kept saying, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. And they didn't. Something just didn't happen here. There was no growth. There's so much stagnancy here that it's almost like you felt like you had no other choice. I have to go. I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing anything here. I need to take some action. I need to create something magical for my life. I can't just do this every day for the next 50 years. But when the Ten of Cups is reversed, I don't know if I said that already, it's usually my trouble in paradise. I don't really see any endings here. I feel like you're in limbo. And I feel like you're saying to yourself, should I just stay there because that's what's expected of me? That's where I'm supposed to be? I feel like you're not exploring other options. Well, in your mind at the moment, because let me finish. Let me get into your future here. So seven of swords in reverse, sign of Aquarius. That does also represent an apology to me. Someone feels shameful. Someone regrets what they did. If they did cheat, you know, and that's why you left. But the truth has come to light here. The deception has been exposed. Everything, I feel like everything's out in the open and I feel like you've already decided to take action. But this confession, this person might have even told you what they did. And then that's what caused you to walk out. But two of wands, sign of Aries. I mean, very clear card. Here we are at a crossroads, holding the world in your hands. What do you want to do? Do you want to go back to being stuck with this person where you were unhappy? Or do you want to continue on your path and move into this nine of pentacles here? Absolutely beautiful. I feel like this is your decision. Right now, I'm seeing that that's what is on the table. They want you to live life on the edge, take a chance, take a risk. You have all of the tools that you need to be successful. You are going to be absolutely fine on your own. You're a very strong, courageous, independent lady who doesn't need anyone. So regardless of what this person is telling you, just know that you're going to be fine. I do feel like that's where your angel and devil combination comes into play here. Should you listen to the angels and move forward? Because I feel like that's what you're being pulled to do. But I also feel like this other person is the devil energy that is trying to pull you back into an unhappy situation where there was just constantly conflict, tension, disagreements, mind games, control. This person really had control. You could possibly be dealing with a narcissist here because narcissists panic when you take away their control. They get down on their hands and knees and start begging. Oh, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. They'll do anything that they can 
to get you back. I mean, we don't have the King of Swords here in reverse. But once they have you back, then they treat you fine for a couple days or a couple weeks or whatever it is. And then they turn right back into the devil. But I feel like you need to be confident and know that you can overcome these obstacles. Yeah, de depression too. Three of Cups reversed is depression. This person's even going to tell you that they're depressed. But I'm hearing like, don't hesitate. Get busy. It's time for you to take action. And it's time for you to be happy. And it's time for you to do you. Every risk is scary in life. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You didn't know how this relationship was going to turn out, but you took a risk. So take a risk on another relationship. There's a saying that says something like, if you're not scaring yourself at least once in a while, you're not living your best life. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I'm very close. Google that and you'll get the whole saying. But Page of Swords, your final outcome here, I do feel like you are facing the truth, speaking the truth. You're speaking right to this person. Like, look at that. Seven of Swords in reverse with the Page of Swords. You got your sword up and you're like looking at them. They're feeling guilty. They're feeling shameful. They know that they got caught. They know that they did something wrong. And you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're accepting this. I feel like you're researching, researching this nine of pentacles here, learning something new, page of wands, your overall energy, very excited, very passionate about doing something else. Maybe you already met a new person with the two pages here that could represent two children. It could represent a new relationship. Maybe that's why this person's coming back because they see that you're with someone else and they don't want you to be happy. Whatever it is, with the two pages and the three of cups in reverse, I feel like there's definitely gossip here. So this person heard something through the grapevine, which is what brought them to you. But I mean, I'll be doing a mid-June reading and we'll see if this has progressed any further. But at this point right now, I feel like you're at this in-between stage. I feel like you're testing the waters in a new direction. So your one foot is leaning towards healing things with this devil. And the other foot has its foot in the water. And I feel like you already might be on to something else, already interested in something else. But I also feel like there is a chance that you are just at an in-between stage and that you should enjoy that for a while. Go buy yourself some new outfits and get your hair done and your nails done and, and you know, just feel good about yourself. B build your confidence up. Maybe go on a diet. I see somebody going on a diet here. But anyway, since we're not doing Vimeo, I'm going to pull some clarifiers. This is pretty much where I would enter into the Vimeo part of the reading. Um, we'll start off with some romance angels. I don't want to block the light too much. Let me take this like that. I don't think that's going to stay anyway. Anyway, all right, you can see it. Angels, divine spirits and guides, show me Aries. For this reading on the table, what additional information do you have for my Aries friends? Let go of control issues and allow this situation to unfold naturally. Even that, look at that. The lady's standing there with her kid and she doesn't look like she really wants to talk to him. She's like, I'm going to take my kid and I'm going to go. He's the one that's controlling. He's the problem. I feel that. And guess what? This could be vice versa. If you're a man and you were in a relationship with a woman, a woman could act like this too. I wouldn't doubt it for a second, especially if they are a narcissist. Angels, show me Aries, please. It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Also notice that there is a horse in this picture. I feel like it's time for you to move forward 
in a new direction. Anytime I see a horse, that represents a new direction for me. Ha! <laughs> Look what's on the bottom. Release your ex. Release your ex, Aries. I feel like it's time. It's time for you to do something for you. Love yourself. The greatest love of all is loving yourself. Let's pull a couple of Island Time Wellness, Angels, Divine Spirits, and Guides. When I get into the clarifying messages, I like to just get them out, get the messages out. Show me Aries. Angels, please show me Aries for June 2020. What does Aries need to know? Show them the message. They need to see. Heartbroken. Deeply hurt, sad, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving, mourning. Well, I'm actually feeling all of that. I'm feeling like you're deeply hurt and sad. But this person, this other person is deeply hurt and sad now over this separation and this breakup. And they're feeling lost and grieving and mourning without you. I mean plain and simple but I don't know I just keep getting this thing like you're obviously on the fence here there's no decision that has been made um, but with the let go of control you know that applies to you as well like don't even try to think about this too much just go with the flow and and see what happens you don't have to make a decision to go home you don't have to make a decision to go back to this person you can do whatever you want take all the time you need girl talk time with friends moving on happily single living in the moment and having fun i mean come on is that what i just said she's got a yes on her shirt can you see that yes it's time for you to do all of that I feel like you're staying with a girlfriend or staying with some friends and maybe even maybe you're overindulging and drinking and having a good time with your friends now because you can. Why not? All right, I'm going to take one more for Aries, please. Angels, thank you. Twin flame. Yin yang, Zen balance, union, duality, coupling, complement each other. I mean, a twin flame is a twin flame. There could be, that's that could go either way. There could be a twin flame that's coming into your, look what's on the bottom, Cupid's arrow. Have faith, love is coming. You need to close a door here for a twin flame to come in. Surprise, invitation, or meeting, hesitation. Wow. Anyway, I was going to say this other person could be a twin flame. And if they are, it's, it's really, you know, even if they don't work out, it's, it's hard to let go of those types of relationships. But I feel like you could be leaving one twin flame slash soulmate and going towards another one but you have to close a door and allow this other one to come in because they want you to take a risk here and take action on manifesting something new with these pages it's very clear let's pull a couple of kipper cards angels divine spirits and guides show me aries please for june 2020 what does Aries need to know? Show them the message they need to see. Aries, show me angels, please. Thank you. Unexpected income. Okay, let's get one more. There's your job that you're getting, or that could even be, uh, I know a lot of people are getting unemployment if you live in the United States. Show me Aries. Could be some extra money to help you get back on your feet. Lovers. Wow. There's an unexpected lover. Uh-oh. That's coming out three times now in the near future. This person may be at a distance. And you may be talking to them online because 
I have the world, the two of wands has the world in it. And then two pages represent the internet to me as well. But you need to release an anchor and fly towards this new love. There's a new love coming in for you, Aries. Bad health. Hmm. That's going to be that person. So I see somebody's depressed here without you. This person is absolutely lost without you. Unbelievable that these people think that they can treat you like garbage. And when you walk away and you start focusing on yourself, then all of a sudden they want you back. All right. I'm going to pull a guardian angel card for, we're going to take two cards for advice and then we'll close out with an angel answers card. And then I'm going to close the reading angels. What final advice do you have? This one, five of action. Your angels want you to know that your current challenge pushes you to be assertive and self-confident. Stand up for yourself and defend your position. You have the right to excuse from excuse yourself from those who bring drama into your life. It's time for this person to go. They're just they're just not worth your time. Bottom of the deck we have two of cups. Oh, <laughs> you definitely got new love coming in. A relationship grows closer as two people fall in love. Friendships may deepen into a spiritual connection. Mutual respect and understanding exist or will develop. Don't give up on relationships that feel challenging to you. There's still hope. Also, I skipped the sentence by accident. I, I skipped the whole line. It said, um, a current relationship may grow much stronger. So this person, this new love that's coming in, I'm kind of feeling like they could be a friend, somebody that you already know. Hmm. All right. I'm going to pull close out with a couple of angel answers for you. Angels, divine spirits, and guides. Show me the final messages for Aries, please. For June 2020, show me Aries. What are the final messages that they need to know about this reading on the table? Trust. Trust that you're doing the right thing. Trust in the universe. Trust in whatever this risk is that they want you to take. Because that was very significant in this reading. It's time for you to take action on yourself, possibly in a new direction with a new person. Opportunity. Trust in a new opportunity that's coming in. It's not the right time to return to this other relationship. I feel that. Okay. Aries, I am going to leave that there. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your situation and I will see you soon.